This is the PII that we're going to be wiring up. If we just remove the cover from that. Inside there, that is the anti-tamper spring. So if somebody removes the cover, that will open circuit, which will set off the tamper in the alarm. At the bottom there, we've got zero volts and plus 12 volts, which is the power to the PIR. In the middle, you've got the alarm. That is the normally closed circuit. So once the circuit is opened, it will go into the alarm condition. And then you've got the two connections there for the tamper. There's also a jumper on this one. That jumper may need moving depending on what kind of alarm you are wiring this up to. I'm now going to mount the PIR. That is going to go in the centre on this wall here. So I'm now going to drill an old up into the loft space, just using a normal drill bit this time. There's no actual joist up here, so we can just go through using a normal size drill bit. And then you can have the cable fed down. Again, we're going to pull this right down to the floor level. Makes it a lot easier for wiring it up. You can always pull back any excess cable later. I've removed a screw from the bottom of the PIR there, if we just pull that up. We've got a shield that goes in the centre there, so I'll just pull that out for now. We're just going to loosen that screw in the centre. And then we can remove the panel from that, and that will enable us to mount this part onto the wall. I'm just going to drill an hole through the top there for the cable. Yeah, I'm just going to drill two smaller holes which will enable us to fix it to the wall. So I'm going to get the PIR where I want it and then I'm just going to mark the two holes for drilling. So now I'm just going to drill the correct size hole for the plugs that we're using which is a 6mm. We'll then wire up the PIR on the bench, it's a lot easier. So we're just going to feed the cable through the back there. Once you've removed enough of the insulation, you can then twist all the conductors together. And then you can bend the conductor back on itself. That means that the screw in the terminal actually grips it a lot better if you do that. We can then place each wire in the correct terminal. So if we start off with the black one, that goes into there which is zero volts. The white then goes into the terminal marked alarm. It doesn't matter which one it goes in. The blue wire goes into the other alarm terminal. The yellow goes into tamper. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. The green goes into the other tamper. And then the red goes into plus 12 volts. So we can now just check that all those terminals are tight. We can now put the PIR in position and we can screw that into place. Can now carefully put the circuit board back in position.
and then we can replace the components in the PII. So put that screw in, that is now firmly fixed to the wall. This is the cable from the PII centre which we are now going to wire up. So again we used blue and white for the circuit wires. So in zone 2 I am now going to wire the blue and white wires. The PIR actually uses all six wires, so we're now going to connect up the negative, which is that one to zero volts. We're going to connect up the positive to plus 13 volts. Now we just have the yellow and green tamper wires. These actually need wiring in series, so we need to remove one of the wires from the existing tamper. So we'll remove the yellow. So that is the wire that I've just pulled out of the tamper. I'm now going to connect that to the green wire which is the tamper for the PIR. So basically what we are doing is we are making a large loop. I'm then going to connect the yellow wire into the tamper. So I'm just going to twist around the strands and then I will put that back into the tamper terminal. So if we were to add another zone onto this alarm we would have to open up the tamper circuit again and put the wires in as we just have done there. So basically you are making one large loop. You should never try and wire your tampers in parallel because it will stop the tamper circuit from working. Now we've twisted that together we can put some insulation tape around that and that will stop that from coming undone. So we've now taped that up and it's quite safe to do this on 12 volt circuitry, it's not really a problem. You can now just push that out of the way.